Good morning. Welcome back to the homestead, everybody. If you're new here, my name is Jessie. I am the mama, and I'm by myself this morning because it's really early, and pretty much everybody's in bed except the puppy dogs and my oldest son, which if you saw during the time lapse, he brought me a little dandelion. I have a story about dandelions. Anyhow, today we are going to can leftover Easter ham. And I was just going to do it and get it over with, and I thought this is something that somebody might want to know. So we're going to do this together. This is my first time ever canning ham. I'm doing things a little bit differently, not for the pressure canning times or anything, but um, I don't have a bone to make the broth with to pour over the meat because my wonderful husband, who didn't know any better, gave it to the mayor. And if you're new here, you'll find out who the mayor is. He's the big hairy boss of the homestead. And he got the ham bones, which is, he earned them. He's the boss. He gets the ham bones. But I didn't know I was going to need them before I gave them to him. So I kind of, uh, <laughs> I got creative. And I took the gallon bags that you saw in the time lapse and filled them full of warm water and kind of sloshed them around because there was a little bit of seasoning and gelatin and stuff in there. And I just put just a little bit, not, not all the way up to the top. I left plenty of head space. And then... I'm going to add just a tiny bit of liquid smoke, not a lot, because, and I might not even do it to all of them, just some of them. <clears throat> I'm just a little worried because this is, this is like the third time this ham is being cooked, if you want to count the curing and the processing, and then the cooking for Easter, and then now the canning. So I just want to make sure it's got just a little tidbit of flavor, a little bit of smoke. I don't want my smoke to go away. Um, but I may only do like maybe half of these just in case I don't like it or whatever. The primary use for this ham is going to be um, casseroles, breakfast hash, ham and beans, stuff like that. So I don't really want it super sweet and it was originally cooked for Easter with brown sugar and pineapple and all the stuff. So I guess I'm just, you know, thinking. You don't know if you don't try, right? And I'm not going to use a lot. You have to be really careful with liquid smoke. It can get nasty in a hurry. So just like a drop. Just boop, and that's it, okay? I'm going to do that real fast, and I'll be back with you. Ethan can come in. He's at the door. All right. You can come in. All right, just a drop. Just a tiny drop. Boop, that's it. Just a wee little bit. Mr. Mayor got the ham scraps from cutting this. I cut all the bark off. I'm not going to do all of them because now I'm second guessing myself. I mean, it's like an eighth of a teaspoon, but I can smell it. So I think we're just going to do five pints. And then that way, if I don't like it, it's not a big deal. And if we do like it, we'll know to do it again. I'm going to zhuzh it around a little bit. I did leave some space because a friend of mine that I did consult before doing this um, advised me that she did dry can hers and it, it did make a little bit of liquid. So I'm trying to leave enough space for um, these that if it does make liquid, it's not going to be a problem and suck up our head space. All right, I have vinegar on a clean rag. All the surfaces are clean. I shouldn't have to tell you this. I don't ever include it in my videos because I'm assuming you're already doing this. But make sure your jars are clean. Make sure your lids are clean. Make sure your bands are clean. Make sure your surfaces are clean and clean as you go through the processing, okay? This is all done, so I'm just going to take my little vinegar rag and I'm going to wipe the top of each one. I do not do vinegar every time, but when it comes to meat, when it comes to chilies or soups or anything like that, that's gonna have some oil or some grease or just a little something something there. Um, we go ahead and we use the vinegar because we want a nice strong seal, right? We're in it to feed our families. We're not in it to make anybody sick. All right, there's the five with smoke, and then I'm gonna kind of keep these separate. I felt a little something on the lid there. Might have a nick on this one. And that's another good reason to use it, to always be sure to wipe your rims, because you might not be able to see a nick, but you can feel a nick. And I actually think I have a little nick on this one, so I'm going to have to swap the jar out. Always be cautious as you go. Like I said, 
said, this is my first time canning ham too, ham too. but I don't want to waste it. We got two giant hams out that we had in the freezer, and we, I just knew everybody would eat it all up, and then we ended up with so much extra. kind of felt like I felt the snack again. Uh, maybe not. <clears throat> At any rate, we are not letting this go to waste. Meat on the shelf is a good, good thing. Yesterday, I canned some leftover deer meat and used some seasonings and some mushroom gravy. It turned out really good. And I put the meat in pints because, especially for the deer meat, that's something you might put over mashed potatoes or put in the soup or over rice or what have you, noodles, anything. And with the ham, if I'm going to make a pot of beans or I'm going to um, make like a breakfast hash or something, I don't need a giant amount because chances are the little ones, they're a little nitpicky on their, and they're eating. So this is going to be a better size for us. On other stuff, such as leftover chilies and things like that, I go ahead and use quartz because we'll use more of that. All right, I'm going to get my lid springs on. I'm going to switch this jar out. Okay, now this is a different kind of jar for me. This is a Dollar General Store jar. It doesn't even really have a name or anything on it. Um, I've never used them before, so we're going to find out today if it's any good or not. But here's what the lid looks like. And that rubber gasket looks pretty good to me. I'm going to make sure this one's going to look different than all the rest because all the rest are going to be these ball or curl lids. Um, you just put it nice and finger tight. Don't go crazy, but we're going to watch this one and see how it does. See if those Dollar General jars are, are good for, for canning it. I'm sure they are. They have Made in China on them, and a lot of people don't like that. But at the time I was looking for jars, it was a matter of what we got to have, not what we want. All right, we're going to put some lids on all these. Everything is kept nice and clean. I don't warm them up. Oh man, look what I did. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Good thing I just wiped off my counter. Look what I did, y'all. I made a mess. I should have put the lids on it, or the rings on it as I went. That towel's going to the utility room. All right, let's check it. It's not bad. Where's my vinegar? Go back on there again. Rewipe it. Don't trust it. I'm doing both. I'm going to redo this one while I'm at it, too. All right, let's try this again. Where'd I put them? Instant reaction. Everybody boo-boos every now and then. Like I said, you're tight. Nothing crazy. Don't reach it on. And I can tell that this ham is pretty greasy. So I'm glad that I used the vinegar. These are all the rings from yesterday's batch. I store them clean in these bags. I don't really have a fancy storage space. I've seen people use paper towel holders, all kinds of neat things. I just use those. Um, I need three more rings, so I'll be right back. Okay, somebody just got out of bed. <laughs> Cat's aggravated, Amy said. All right, anyhow, we have 15 pints. The ones that I put the little dab of liquid smoke in, I have the word smoke written on top of the lid. I'm starting off with a cold canner, um, not super cold water, but just normal tap water because these jars are not, you know, they're not hot at all. Pulled them out of the fridge, chopped them up. So we're going to start off with everything cold and we're going to bring it up to vent pretty slow. Okay, so we're going to load her up. Excuse me, buddy. Actually, let's see. This is All American 921, three quarts of water. And it will hold all of these pints. That one's taller, so we'll... 
I make sure everything's the same height here on this bottom thing. That's just my deal. Got a second rack. I might be able to fit. No, that'll work. Put your rack on. Set your next ones in. And I kind of do a line across the top for those. You can pack them in tighter, but since I have 15 there, there's going to be plenty of space between them. But I could probably do a jar on each level to get it full. I can't remember if it's supposed to hold 16 or 18 pints. Now for pints. Once we get it warmed up, we're going to let this vent for 10 full minutes. After it vents for 10 minutes, we're going to put our weight on. I'll show you the process. And we're going to let this come up to pressure. Here in our area, it's 10 pounds of pressure. Once it hits the 10-pound mark, I usually wait till I hear that first little jiggle because I like to make sure it's up, up. Set your timer. Pints is 75 minutes. Quartz is 90 minutes. Let's get her on. Always check. I might have to add a little bit. You need a lubricant on these. Not all canners are like this. You need to learn your canner. My canner has to have a little bit of a lubricant because there's no gasket on the lid. Okay? I think it feels good. We have a, a little arrow and a little indention here. Carefully put your lid on. Okay. If I turn it the right way, that might help. And you're going to crank these down on opposite sides. Torque them down. Get them nice and tight. Don't get them so tight you can't get them off, but don't do that. I'm going the wrong way again. There we go. I'm a lot looser. You just how to feel. All right. I'll tell y'all something. I water bath canned for quite a while and got really comfortable with it. Had no problem with it whatsoever. I bought this canner. I'm feeling to make sure that your lid is level and it feels like it's pretty good. I bought this canner, y'all. I will confess to you, I did not use it for like two years after I got it because I was scared of it. The very first thing I ever canned in my pressure canner was carrots so don't let fear stop you I'll never forget the feeling I watched it like a hawk I was scared it was gonna explode it did fine right and now we can everything we possibly can 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 can, can. all right let's get the stove going I'll bring you back when it's venting okay hopefully you can see that that's a good steady stream of, of steam and I just set the timer for 10 minutes this is called venting. After this vents for 10 minutes, then we're going to put the weight on. Okay, so we vented a full 10 minutes. This is our weight. You have 5, 10, and 15, and in our area we use 10 pounds, 10 pounds of pressure. I use an oven mitt because I don't like steam burns. You just get on there, drop her on there. Now, come down. I have a new cameraman here. When this starts building and it's already going up, when it gets just a hair above 10 for me, I'm going to start turning my oven down and gradually, and we're going to set our timer. That's all there is to it. Alrighty, that's not steam from the canner, that's steam from underneath there. But anyway, one of my burners is burning something off. We're a little hair above 10 pounds of pressure, so I've started turning the oven down, or the stove, not the oven. I've went from an eight to a six, and eventually I will go from a six to a floor four, and that is my sweet spot on my stove for my canning. So you'll have to learn yours, but normally at a four, that's where mine sits happy. So now we've set our timer, and it's going to be 75 minutes for pints. All righty. Miss Ruthie moved my thing over. Ruthie? There. That's a little better. A little dark. Can you see me? All right. Time's up. Here's what I did. Stove shut down, and I'm not touching nothing, okay? Lever shut down, we're gonna watch this dial, and as the gauge goes all the way down to zero, we're gonna leave it a little longer after that. And then we're gonna test this little jiggler, this weight, see if anything comes out, okay? So, don't touch it, leave it shut off, 
walk away, go do something, read a book, use the potty, go water your plants, which is what I'm about to do, go run laps, whatever. Don't touch it. And we'll be back in a little bit. Alrighty, I'm looking for my oven mitt. There it is. The gauge has been removed, or the weight, not gauge. There goes my mouth. The weight has been removed. It's been sitting for about 43 minutes. So, we're going to loosen up our our lid. This one always sticks. Oh, there it goes. Now they're moving. Okay. Now that the lid is loosened, weight's off, we're not going to totally remove it. We're going to give it a little bit more time. I'm just turning it I'm lifting it and I'm going to set it off to the side a little bit. And you see this kind of rush of steam coming out? Hopefully you can see that. I don't know. My door is open. So you might not be able to. And we're going to leave this for like another 10 minutes or so. No big deal. Okay. While we're waiting on this to cool off or the steam to come out for about 10 minutes, I'll show you what my deer meat from yesterday looks like. Okay. Here we go. Looks pretty good, right? This is um, just a freezer clean out of some deer roast. Actually, it was like a whole shoulder. I cooked it really low and slow in the roaster pan for probably almost two days. I mean, I cooked it that low because I was busy. And it just fell off the bone by the time I got done cooking it. Then I peeled it. You hear my rooster. Then I peeled it all off the bone, got rid of any skin, anything like that. Um, had some of it for supper. And the rest of it I put in jars with some mushrooms, some caramelized onions that I had canned just to give it a little extra flavor because I did not have any extra bone broth or anything to throw in it, and some pot roast seasonings and brown gravy mix, the store-bought mix, and that's what I put in here. And there it is. You can see a little mushroom right there. So it's, you know, not big chunks, but it'll be excellent to put over any kind of mashed potatoes. And I ended up with 12 pints. So that's great. That's several meals for just a little freezer clean out, which I need to do more of. I keep saying I'm going to clean the freezer out. I haven't done it yet. All right. Let's check her out. Let's see how she looks. Always be careful not to get steam on your face. The weight is still hot, so I put it over here out of the way. Oh, there they are right here. Alright, let's take a look. Smells good. There's one. Wow, that looks really nice. Good and bubbly. Always move them slow. Now this one doesn't have quite as much liquid, but that could be nothing. It doesn't mean it siphoned because I don't see any others that look like that. So it's probably just that one. Like I said, I didn't fill them all the way up with liquid because I knew they'd make more. I'm going to come a little closer and move slowly. Check it out. Doesn't that look good? Never done it before. This is brand new to me. I'm just sharing with you. I think it looks fantastic. This is the china jar because it has a different lid so this is the dollar store jar something just came in there and it looks like it held up just fine we'll see if it's sealed or not but this is it because it's just a plain lid miss ruthie's right by my tripod so if for some reason it moves it's because it's ruthie and she thinks she's going to get a bite of ham obviously she's not i think they look great Wide mouth gets me. All right, there's my top row. Let's see. Actually, let's see this. How my bottom row works. From what I understand, oh yeah, my water looks good. <clears throat> As I was saying, from what I understand, when you want to use this, you can just if you want to throw it in beans, you can keep your liquid because that's just going to help flavor your beans. But if you want to put it in like a casserole or a hash, 
or something where you want the ham more dry, they just dump the water off and let the bacon dry, or bacon, there I go again, the ham dry, and then just use it as they normally would. So I see some good breakfast and stuff in our future. This is pretty cool. I think there's a casserole where you scallop some potatoes with cheese and add ham to it. That'd be good. I ended up with 15 total. And the Sharpie stayed on the ones that say smoke, so those are still labeled. I'm pretty pleased. Can you hear them pinging? Or can you hear my baby chicks? They might be too loud for you to hear the pinging. There's one. Okay. Now, let this sit. Don't mess with it. 12 to 24 hours. 24 hours is preferable, but if you have a small kitchen like me and you need your space, 12 hours will do it. Once you're done, take your rings off, label your jars. I haven't labeled my deer meat yet, but label your jars. Before you label it, though, I don't do this with everything. It's just to basically as a, as a need-to-do type basis. But anytime you have meat or anything, there might be a little film, might feel a little yucky. I actually put these in the sink after I take the rings off, and I wash these with soap and water and get them good and clean. So these have been washed. These will be washed tomorrow before I put them on the shelf. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. But that was it. I'll show you real fast. Nice and bubbly. I think it looks great. Well, thanks for joining me today. I hope this inspires you to try to can more stuff at home. Don't be afraid of that pressure canner. It just takes a little practice and um, it's not scary at all. These pressure canners, these newer versions are awesome. They, they have safety measures to keep you safe. And if you just keep an eye on it and take your time doing things, you'll be fine. All right. Thanks for joining us. I don't know what he's doing in my arms. <laughs> Do what you can right where you are. Psalms 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Bye.